Okay, welcome to Oceans Unlimited. We're going to be taking a look at some theory on navigational light ranges. Uh, this is going to be some nav general stuff, and it's going to come in handy when we're dealing with navigational lights and the basic principles uh, behind them. Resources for this video are going to come from the American Practical Navigator. This is Bowditch. You probably know it well. Uh, in this particular edition, it's going to be coming from Chapter 4, and we're going to be looking at using the light list data. Now, for our example here, when we get uh, some laying some background concepts, we're going to be looking at Pilot Island Light right here, boom, 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 on Lake Michigan. And the theoretical scenario is right, we're going to be coming towards the light. We're navigating somewhere in this area, maybe coming from here, here, here. And as we approach a light, we have a fundamental question that we need to know, or that we'd like to know. And that's, what's the distance off when we first see a particular light. So when and where are we going to see Pilot Island light for the first time? Now the answer to this question is going to be the visual threshold of the light, right? It's going to be some kind of line of position. This is a range. You should be familiar with that, hopefully. A range, a line of position. And if we have this information, this positional information, we can obviously use it to combine our with our, uh, our plotting. If we're doing dead reckoning, we can anticipate where, where our location is going to be, what our position will be when we reach that visual threshold. Now, what do we need to know to calculate this? Well, we need a few things. We need a baseline to compare different lights, of course, right? Different lights are going to have different power levels. They're going to be visible at different ranges. We're going to need to know the current visibility conditions, right? If we're uh, sailing in fog or restricted visibility, we're going to need to know the height of the light. And we're gonna to need to know the height of us, right? The observer, how high we are on our bridge or pilot house. So the data that's printed on the uh, chart here, we can see a little bit right here in this example. If you can, if you can look here, it's kind of small lettering. It's got 48 feet and 12 statute miles. Right there, that's two of the pieces of information. That's our height of light and the, that baseline measurement of range, baseline range. The other place you can find this uh, information is going to be on the U.S. Coast Guard light list. If we go to the Coast Guard website here, um, you can also just Google it, uh, look for light list, USCG light list. That's a good way to get to it. And then you can get weekly updates and it's divided up by district. So in our case here, we're looking at the Great Lakes. We click on that. Okay, so this is this, the light list for the Great Lakes, and here's Pilot Island Light, and you can see we have that same data. The height is in this column. Uh, it's column five. You know, it's kind of hard to see from, you know, if you scroll up a little bit, right, top of this page, height. Height is 48, and the distance 12. So that matches up with our chart. However, we, we want to be aware that the most current data is in fact the U.S. Coast Guard light list and any notice to Mariner data that, that might be uh, that might supersede that and that's updated weekly. Um, again, that's sort of the disclaimer. In reality, lights don't change that much, especially if they're fixed lights, right? No one's swapping heights out or anything like that. That's, that's pretty quick. So a couple of quick definitions. Nominal range of the light is what we can see. That's this is that baseline that we were talking about. So the range that we get on from the chart in the light list, that's the nominal range, right? This is your starting off point, and it's based on 10 nautical miles of visibility. Uh, it's probably about 12 or so statute miles, I believe. Um, the visual range of the light in clear conditions, okay? And so here our conditions are listed here. This is something that you can find in Bowditch. It's also on, printed in the light lists themselves. Um, this is where you have visibility codes that reflect the, the, the range of visibility. So once we have the nominal range, we can calculate our luminous range. So this is a modification of that nominal range, and it's based on what the current conditions actually are. So while luminous range does account for atmospheric effects, it doesn't actually factor in our heights. That's going to be a separate component and that's going to go into a category all of its own. That's the geographic range of the light. So the geographic range is the maximum visual range 
that's determined by the characteristics of the Earth and line of sight. So that's where our height of eye and the height of the light come into play. And this ignores the atmospheric conditions. So these are two different sides of the same coin. Let's take a look at diving into the luminous range calculation itself. You're going to need two tables. The one here on the right is the luminous range table. And the one here on the left is usually placed close by. So let's have a hypothetical example of a light with a listed nominal range of 13. So that would be on, either on the chart or in the light list itself. That's on 13. This scale here is the nominal range of the light. You enter the chart with that range. You draw yourself a vertical line. And then as you see here, the codes on our visibility conditions match up with our different zones here on the luminosity chart. Let's say we have a visible condition that is not quite clear. We got light haze. So that's condition six. So that's going to be a horizontal line. And I'm going to draw in two to, to indicate the entire range of possible values. When you come up on a Coast Guard question on the exams, they're going to give you a specific number. So they might say four nautical miles. So that'd be closer to the five and a half. It'd be somewhere, and you just kind of have to guesstimate, you know, close, best guess answer. And you're also going to have multiple choice answers. That's going to help. But we can see that the entire distance covered in our code six, two to five and a half, gives us a net result of about, uh, looks like about four and a half to eight and a half. So that's luminous range. Now we're going to look at how to calculate the geographic range of a light. And this is, again, where we're going to have to take those components of height into account. And this is a, a, a straight mathematical formula. We have two tables in Bowditch that deal with this formula. Table 12 is going to give you the distance of one particular height in feet or in meters. And that's going to give you either nautical or statute miles. I like table 12 because of that. Let's do an example here on table 12 and we'll do a height of 20 a, and we're going to do a height of 11. So it doesn't, I mean, that could be, one could be the light, one could be your height of eye. The important thing to understand is that you have to add the two values together. So say you're using nautical miles, you'd add 3.9, 5.2, so you get 9.1. This is just what is physically possible based on your line of sight limitations and the curvature of the earth table 13 does essentially the same thing you you don't have to measure out the two separate entities and then add them this is going to let you come in one way so the you're going to have the height of the observer along the top here so we can do our same example here 20 feet is this column here and then the object height our light our navigation light is going to be 11 so it's going to be an interpolated value that's a little tricky sometimes that's kind of why i prefer table 12 but we have between 10 and 13 so it's in there between those two and our distance in miles you know we have 8.9 we calculated this was 9.1 so that's about right the approximate result is about nine nautical miles for the geographic range the good news is if you don't like tables you can just use the formulas directly. And here they are for nautical miles and statute miles. You take the uh, these constants here, 1.169, and that'll give you the nautical miles if you multiply that by the square root of the height of the object in feet. Now, this could be either you or the light. Just remember, if you're going to do it this way, you have to add it at both parts, right? You have to do one for the light to the horizon and then one for you to the horizon. Um, that would be your nautical miles. The constant is a little bit different for statute miles. It's 1.345. Same idea. Take the height of the object, take the square root of that, multiply it by that, and you get the distance to the horizon in statute miles. So for any light, we're going to have a luminous range that we can figure out from our tables, and we're going to have a geographic range that we can figure out from either the tables or these formulas on this page. So whichever measurement is smaller, either the luminous or the geographic, that's going to be the limit. You can forget about the larger number. 
So let's take a look at a first question here. The light list indicates that a navigational light has a nominal range of 10 miles and is 11 feet high. If the visibility is 15 miles and your height of eye is 20 feet, at what approximate distance will you sight the light? So our nominal range is 10 miles. Okay. All right, draw the line at 10 and our visibility is 15 miles. Okay, so that puts us in zone eight, I believe. Yes, that's probably gonna be right around here. Right now we have an approximate value of about 13 nautical miles. Okay, that's our luminous range. Step two, we're gonna figure out our geographic range. That's the other process where we take into account the height of the light and the height of the observer. Now we're gonna use table 12 here. That's the way I prefer to do it. Again, you can use table 13, whichever way is preferable to you. Okay, so our light is 11 feet high. Okay, so we highlight 11. And um, this looks pretty familiar. All right, yeah, 33.9 is our nautical mile range. And our height of eye is 20 feet. Okay, so we come over here we find 20 feet, and I think this is the same as our example. So 3.9 and 5.2, we're gonna add those together and get 9.1. So we now have both ranges calculated. We just have to figure out which one is smaller. And there we go, 9.1, and our best answer that's gonna approximate that is answer D here. Let's take a look at another example. The light list shows that a navigational light has a nominal range of 15 miles and a height above water of 29 feet. Your height of eye is 52 feet and visibility is 6.0 miles. At which approximate range will you first sight the light? We're gonna put our baseline nominal range on the chart, that's 15 nautical miles. And we're gonna take a look at our visibility conditions which are six miles. So that puts us in clear conditions, code seven. So it's gonna be about close to this five and a half line, right? We got 11 up here, five and a half down here. And that's gonna be somewhere around here. Let's draw our horizontal line in right about there. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna say that's about 11 nautical miles for our luminous range. Let's take a look at our geographic range. Okay, we're gonna look at a section here from chart number 12, this is chart 12, I just have it cut off. We've got 29 feet, okay? So that's the height of our light. 29 feet there, looking at 6.3 nautical miles. Let's take a look at our other measurement, 52 feet. So 52 feet, uh, we're gonna have to interpolate a little bit here. I'll call that about, uh, Let's see, between 8.3, 8.4. Okay, so our height of eye at 52 feet, 8.4, we add the two together, we have 14.7. So again, once we have both measurements dialed in, we just pick the one that is smaller of the two. So we have 11 here, and that gives us an answer B. Bravo, 11 miles. Excellent, okay. So that wraps up our little demo on light ranges. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned to our channel. We're gonna be checking out this topic and many more like it. All things maritime in future videos to come. Thanks for watching.